So today again we are very fortunate that we are having Her Grace Preeti Vlasni Mataji to enlighten us on the past tense of Lord Ramchandra. Today we are going to start uh, the Uttar Kand of uh, Balmiki Ramayan. So Mataji, now you can please start the class. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, and then the pronouns to everyone who is accepted my humble obeisances. I thank everyone for being with us today uh, for this discussion. Um, so uh, then, uh, before I start with the prayers, I just wanted to give some uh, heads up, some introduction on how this section will be. So basically, the theme of the Uttarakhanda will be, of course, the storyline of the Valmiki Ramayana. So as usual, I will just be telling the storyline and we can relish Ram Katha. And uh, unfortunately for this section, there are no seminars by our Guru Vargas. Uh, most of the Guru Vargas have stopped with uh, Ramapatta Bishekam. So what we will do is, uh, we have the basic storyline, and also for your reference, you can use Purna Pragnadas Prabhu's book, uh, of uh, Valmiki Ramayan, uh, which he has summarized. He has also summarized Uttarakhanda. So that can be used as a reference. Uh, in case you want to look up to the storyline, you can use that. And uh, when we take realizations, we won't be, uh, I mean, basically we'll concentrate on the story. And then necessary, when we take realizations, uh, we will use uh, our Guru Varga's, uh, you know, words uh, in terms of uh, what realization, you know, like for example, we're talking about envy or humility, then we can take realize, uh, their words for realization. And uh, also, uh, the idea of this section would be to reconnect to the previous kandas. Because Uttarakhanda is more like a completion of the book. So basically what happens is whatever you th uh, was somewhat left unanswered in the previous section would actually come up in the Uttarakhanda. Like for example, like today we are going to see uh, the origin of the Rakshasas, how Ravana became so powerful, what's so special about Indrajit. So like that, you know, so Ra Lord Ram asks these questions and these questions are answered. So basically, in every point, you will be trying to connect to the previous kind of, this is more like a, a section that makes the Ramayana complete, okay? Uh, it's a book of answers, as it's always called as. There's a, there are a lot of answers in this section. So we will concentrate on that. And um, so basically, uh, this section will be again uh, very much like the previous sections where we are just telling the story and when needed we can take uh, some small realizations. Uh, so that will be our uh, theme for this kind. And also uh, before we go ahead I just wanted to make another mention which I have already made. But generally we all know Uttarakhanda is not very openly discussed uh, because it is accepted that uh, Ramayana is over after Ramapatta Bishekam but we all very well know there is Uttarakhanda. But it's not openly discussed much. Uh, but but uh, we decided to do this section based on the requests and also getting permission. We have uh, permission of uh, Man Mataji helped to talk to one Maharaj and get permission if it's okay. And he said it's okay as long as we read from Valmiki Ramayana and we don't digress from the main storyline and we don't digress from philosophy, that is the Bhakti philosophy or Vaishnava philosophy. Uh, so that's what we'll be trying to do here. It's just like a joint uh, session where, you know, if I go wrong, please feel free to correct me. And uh, if, uh, you know, you think something is not going right, tell me, we can correct it. Okay. So I thank you all so much uh, for being with us today. I'll start over with the prayers. Om Ajnana Timiran Vasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Milita Nena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langa Yate Kirim Yat Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurum Dinatharinam Nama Om Vishnu Padayan Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Radha Nata Swami Nitinamani Nama Om Vishnu Padayan Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvises Shumya Vadi Pachayati Deshatarini Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Prayers to Valmiki, Hanuman and Lord Sri Ramchandra. Pujantam Rama Rame Thi Maduram Maduraksharam Aruhya Kavita Shakam Vande Valmiki Kokilam. 
ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿರ್ಮುನಿಸಿಂಹಸ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾವನ ಚಾರುಣ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ರಾಮಕಥಾನಾಥ ಕೋಣಯಾತಿ ಪರಾಂಗತಿ ವೇದ ವೇದೇ ಪರೇಪಂಸಿ ಜಾತಿ ದಶರಥಾತ್ಮಜೆ ವೀರ ಪ್ರಾಚೇತ ಸಾದಾಸಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣಾತ್ಮನ ಅಂಜನಾನಂದನ ವೀರಂ ಜಾನಕೀ ಶೋಕನಾಶನಂ ಕತೀಶ ಮಕ್ಷಹಂತಾರಂ ಲಂಬೇ ಲಂಕಾ ಭಯಂಕರಂ ಮನೋಜವಂ ಮಾರುತ ತುಲ್ಯವೇಗಂ ಜಿತೇಂದ್ರಿಯಂ ಬುದ್ಧಿಮತಂ ವರಿಷ್ಠಂ ವಾತಾತ್ಮಜಂ ವಾನರಯೂತ ಮುಖ್ಯಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಧೂತಂ ಶಿರಸ ನಮಾಮಿ ಆಂಜನೇಯ ಮದಿಪಾಟನಾಲನ ಕಾಂಚನಾಡ್ರಿ ಕಮನೀಯ ವಿಗ್ರಹಂ ಕಾರಿಜಾತ ತಿರುಮೂಲವಾಸಿನ ಭಾವಯಾಮಿ ಭವಮಾನನಂದನ ಯತ್ರ ಯತ್ರ ರಘುನಾಥ ಕೀರ್ತನ ತತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಕೃತ ಮಸ್ತಕಾಂಜಲಿ ಬಾಷ್ಪವಾರಿ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಲೋಚನ ಮಾರುತಿ ನಮತ ರಾಕ್ಷಸಾಂತಕ ಶ್ರೀರಾಘವಂ ದಶರಥಾತ್ಮಜಂ ಅಪ್ರಮೇಯಂ ಸೀತಾಪತಿ ರಘುಕುಲಾನ್ಮಯ ರತ್ನದೀಪಂ ಆಜಾನುಬಾಹಂ ಅರವಿಂದ ದಯಾಳ ದಾಕ್ಷಂ ರಾಮಂ ನಿಶಾಚರ ವಿನಾಶಕಂ ನಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ now we start uh, with uttarakhanda part 1 uh, which talk about the origin of the rakshasas and uh, the birth of ravana and how ravana got powerful so that is the first section we'll be looking at so uh, in our previous section of course we did ramapatta vishekam uh, so after ram regained his uh, glorious kingdom of ayodhya he was crowned the king of ayodhya all the sages uh, from different directions uh from east west north south from all directions the great sages like kaushika kanva atri kashyapa vishwamitra janadagni gautama bharatvaja um agastya vasishta all of them all these great sages who are known all over the world they came to see the lord after he received the kingdom and after he settled down in the king so they all came to ayodhya to pay a visit to the lord and talk to him so that's how the uttarakhand begins now they arrived at the entrance of the palace and agastya muni who was leading the group of uh, these uh, rishis uh, he went and told the doorkeeper to go and call for ram so immediately the doorkeeper he went running uh, and he told ram that all the sages had come to see him and ram was very happy he immediately got up he went running outside and he welcomed all of them and offered them all items of worship and he worshiped the sages uh, very nicely so then you know like how when great kings receive sages they inquire about their well being about the austerities that they have been performing so like that uh, lord ramchandra was very re- in a very reverential way he was worshiping the sages and inquiring from them now the sages they in turn they began to speak to the lord because they had come to see him because they wanted to talk to him about certain things so they went and they uh, began to talk to lord ram so they said oh raghava you are very well known in this entire universe and we are so happy that you are ruling this kingdom today you are safe and you have destroyed all your enemies so with your astra and your shastra we are happy that you killed ravana his sons his grandsons his brothers ministers and all the demons so it is so great that you killed ravana and he was such a terror to the universe you know, you have killed him and this is no surprise to us that ravana was killed by you because we know ravana will be killed by you but actually we are so delighted that you managed to kill indrajit this is what the uh, sages are saying you're saying mm-hmm. we are so happy that you managed to kill of all people indrajit this is what they say because indrajit is so difficult to be won over he is such an expert in magical tricks and you got released you and lakshman you got released from the nagapasha of indrajit and finally indrajit was killed so we are so happy that this indrajit is dead and you have awarded us with all fearless fearlessness all abhaya so we are so happy all glory be unto you so when ram heard these words of the sages he was actually very surprised he didn't understand why the sages were saying oh we know that you will kill ravana but we are surprised that you killed indrajit so he asked oh how is it that you all uh, praise indrajit over ravana or kumbhakarna or devantaka or narantaka or dhumraksha atikeya all of them they are such great warriors but why is it that so much importance is given to indrajit even over ravana so what is so special about indrajit what is it that makes him greater than his father i want to know about this so when ram asked this question uh, all of them were very pleased to hear this question from ram so hereafter it is going to be a conversation between lord ram and the sages okay 
So Ram is asking questions to the sages, and the sages will answer. So Rama, tell me about Indrajit. How is it that he became so powerful? How did he become Indrajit? That is, how did he conquer Indra? Why did he get the name Indrajit? How did he get so many boons? Tell me about him. Okay. So when the sages were asked by Lord Ram like this, Sage Agastya, uh, who was the representative, uh, he smiled and he said, Ram, yes, I will tell you about Indrajit. But before that, we all must understand about the family of Ravana. Who Ravana is? What is his birth? What are his boons? What is his power? What is the origin of the Rakshasas? So first we will understand that and then we will go to Indrajit. So this is what Agastya begins with. Now, he said, he started beginning, uh, sorry, he started, be, sorry, he started telling the story. So he said, long, long ago, so long ago, in the beginning of creation by Brahma, in a very remote Satya Yoga, long time ago, there lived a sage by the name Pulastya. You must have heard of this name. The sage's name is Pulastya. He was very, very great. He was very righteous. And he was very much like his father Brahma. So Brahma's own son was Pulastya. Now this uh, sage Pulasya, he had a very high character and he was very good in doing meditation and all kinds of austerities. So he went on the slopes of Mount Meru. There he went near the ashram of a sage called as Trinabhanu and he lived there. And he was performing very severe austerities there uh, in, this, uh, in this area. Okay, so basically he went to Mount Meru, which was surrounded by forests and mountains. He went there and he was performing very severe austerities with Sage Kulasya, who is the son of Brahma. Then he was uh, pe performing this particular penance there. Since it was an area, you know, Mount Meru, we hear that all these pleasure gardens are there and all the apsaras and all these beautiful women, they visit this place and they have these uh, pastimes there. So basically, very beautiful women like these apsaras, naga women, daughter of different demigods, all of them, they love to play in these gardens. So they used to sing and they used to play music there. And they used to, you know, enjoy with the friends. Now, the sage Pulasya, he felt very disturbed because he didn't like these women coming there and uh, playing and shouting and laughing. So he felt very disturbed uh, when he was performing penances and these girls were disturbing, you know, that area. So they were actually very innocent. They were not purposely trying to disturb him or something. Like, you know, sometimes Indra, he sends these apsaras to divert the meditation of Rishi. So basically, these apsaras were not up to that. They were just innocent girls playing ball and, you know, having fun in that area. But somehow, Pulatsya, he wanted a silent atmosphere because his purpose was to do meditation. So he didn't want to be disturbed by these women. So what he did, being a sage of great power, he suddenly, he pronounced a curse in front of all the women. He said, no one should come in this area. If someone comes here and I happen to see any woman here, she on whom my eye falls will become pregnant instantly. This is a curse that he gave there. So he said, if I see any girl around me, she will instantly become pregnant, so all of you run away from here. So everyone ran away because nobody wanted to become untimely pregnant out of the blue. So everyone said, no, we are going to keep away from you, and they all ran away. However, the daughter of Trinabhanu, I said this uh, Pulatsya, he was meditating near the ashram of Trinabhanu. He was also a sage in those days. So this Trinabhanu had a daughter. She did not hear this curse. She was not there around that day. So she was away. And uh, the next day, she came near the ashram and she was roaming about very freely, searching for her companions. And uh, she didn't find her companions, so she was going from one place to other. And uh, at that time, Sage Pulitzia, he was reading the Vedas. He was, in, you know, he was reading, he was doing his daily study, and he saw this girl in front of him suddenly. He just saw her. So what happens is, he had already pronounced a curse that the minute he sees a girl, that girl will become pregnant, right? So basically, on account of the curse that he had previously told, this girl became pale and there were symptoms of pregnancy. And she was very alarmed. She didn't understand what happened. All of a sudden, her body was changing. So she got really scared and she went running to her father and she told her father what had happened. Now, this Trinabhandu, uh, whose daughter was actually you now suddenly become pregnant, 
he went into meditation and found out what had happened what had happened and it was because of sage pulatsya it's only because of his curse that his daughter has become pregnant so the father then took the daughter and went to the sage and told him see this is my daughter and she is now pregnant so i have to give her in uh, 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 i have to give her hand and marriage to you itself and you have to accept her she is also a brahmana's daughter so you have to accept her as a wife now sage pulatsya could understand the situation and he accepted her immediately and this like this girl she was a very very nice girl and she served the sage very nicely in all the austerities that pulatsya was performing she regular uh, she was also sitting in the place where pulatsya was reading the veda and while she was pregnant the child in her womb regularly listened to the vedas that pulatsya maharishi was reciting just like how we have heard that prahlad had heard to narada while he was in the womb generally when a child listens to my krishna katha in the womb he automatically becomes a devotee that's why uh, even these days among devotee circles we make it a point to hear the entire shrimad bhagavatam or stories from the bhagavatam regularly when the child is in the womb so anyway this child was very fortunate uh, to be present there and he was regularly hearing to the veda from sage pulatsya so one fine day the sage called to his wife and he told her the day is nearing and now you will have a son who is equal to me in every respect and he will be known as saulatsya generally when we say uh, you know for example um, we say vasudeva vasudeva like that you know the son becomes uh, 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 like a kunti kaunteya like that so pulatsya saulatsya uh, so he said i will name the son as saulatsya and he will continue our line both yours and mine and since he has listened to all the vedas very attentively in the womb he will be also known as vishrava vishravas okay vish uh, shrava we know shravanam to hear and we means the knowledge of the vedas so hence he will be known as the person who has heard all the vedas and he will be called as vishrava so this vishrava who had come from sage pulatsya was exactly like his father he was very well dressed he was disciplined and he had a very great character now um i mean uh, i will just ask some interactive questions so if you think you can answer just go ahead otherwise we'll continue with the story line so anyone remember now if you're connecting trying to connect back to the previous kanda does anyone remember who vishravas is is he the father of the uh, ramana kumpal yes 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 <laughs> so that's why we are seeing the story of vishrava who is this vishrava this vishrava is so he is the father of ramana okay so now let's continue with the story of vishrava what happened when he grew up so now this vishrava he grew up to be a very saintly person and the sage bharadwaj heard about his glories and gave his daughter devavarni in marriage to vishrava okay so this bharadwaj we also see ramchandra when he was coming back uh, he also stopped in sage bharadwaj ashram even while in the forest while going to the forest also he stopped at sage bharadwaj's ashram so this bharadwaj the same bharadwaj had a daughter he had heard about the glories of this vishrava and he gave his daughter devavarni in marriage to vishrava okay now Uh, in the view of promoting spiritual welfare and having a very nice devotee child vishrava and devavarni they had a son who had all the brahmanical qualities and any guesses on who this child could be we already saw the ravana is also the son of vishrava now who is this child because this particular child was born to the daughter of bharadwaj and this child had very great devotee and brahmanical qualities anyone wants to say hey bishan and no we are not yet there ah kuvera yeah perfect <laughs> awesome very nice yeah it was kuvera and this is kuvera so seeing all the inclination that this boy who was born from vishravas and devavarini 
practicing all the inclination that he had you know to do very good things in the world and when the child was born the father could foresee that he is going to take a very great position he is going to become the lord of wealth he was kubera so in consultant uh, consultancy with all the sages he called all the sages and they had a conference and uh, vishravan uh, uh, vishrava's son his name was vaishravana okay pulatsya paulatsya no Uh, uh, also known as Vishrava, now Vishrava's son became known as Vaishravana. This Vaishravana is Kudera. Okay, he is also known as Kudera. So this Vaishravana, uh, he again grew up to be a very saintly person, and he he was uh, he had this intention of doing many dharmic activities. So he decided to perform many austerities, and he performed tapas for thousands and thousands of years with very strict discipline. You know, like drinking only water, then taking just air, and then going without taking anything like this. You know, we see in the story of Dhruva how Dhruva was doing all these strict meditation like that. Uh, Kubera was doing very strict austerities, and thousands of years just flew away like a year. Okay, in the austerities that he had performed, Brahma was very pleased, and Brahma appeared there and he said, "Vaishravana, I'm so pleased with you, so you can ask me for a boon." So at that time, Vaishravana. Uh, he asked for a boon that he wanted to become one of the guardians of the worlds, one of the Lokapalas or Lokarakshakas. So at that time, Brahma was very happy. He said, "That's wonderful. I was just about to create the fourth Lokapala, and you can become that person, and I will make you the lord of wealth." Okay. So basically, he said, "You will be equal to all the other guardians. Who are the other guardians? Yama, Varuna, and Indra." Okay. So I was looking for a fourth person. Now you'll be the fourth Lokapalaka. So like this, Kubera became one of the Lokapalakas by the boon given by Brahma. So at that time, this is the time when Brahma presented the Pushpa Kaviman as a bonus, bonus offer to uh, Kubera. It was fashioned by Vishwakarma and it was given by Lord Brahma himself. So he said, you can also keep this airplane. Being the lord of wealth, you'll have responsibilities. Keep this airplane, and you can go wherever you like with this airplane. So you can imagine from where this Ishpaka has come. It has come all the way from Brahma. So taking these boons, these two boons of being a Kubera, the lord of wealth, as well as taking the Ishpaka Vimana, he went to his father Vishrava, and he told his father the happy news. He said, Father, now I have become the Lokapalaka, but I didn't ask Brahma where I should stay. I didn't ask him where my residence would be. Brahma didn't tell me that. So you, being my father, you please select a very holy place for me, where no injury for any living entity will be caused by me. I will go there and live there. Okay? I don't want to cause injury to any living being. I want to be very nice. So please give me a place where I can go and live. So Vishwas, he said, my dear son, on the shores of the southern ocean. There is a very beautiful mountain called Trikuta, and situated on that mountain is the beautiful city called Lanka. You can go there and live, my son. So previously, now Pulasya is giving one more. St- I mean, sorry, uh, Vishravas is giving one more story. He is saying, Kubera, his son Kubera, you go and live in that city called Lanka on top of Trikuta mountain. And previously, the city actually belonged to the Rakshasas, but it's vacant now. Okay. Just remember these words. He says, previously the city had already belonged to the Rakshasas. It the city has golden fortifications and moats and mechanical conveyances and weapons, and the city is decorated with precious gems and capital gems and all that. It looks very beautiful. You go there, you live happily with all your followers, and this particular city was deserted by the Rakshasas, and the Rakshasas. Why they deserted the city previously is because they fled in fear of Lord Vishnu, and now all these Rakshasas are residing in Rasatala Loka, that is one of the subterranean heavenly planets, right? Atala Vitala Sutala like that till Rasatala Tala Tala Patala like that in the Rasatala region, all these demons have gone. So that area is vacant now. My dear Kubera, you go there and you live there, and you will not cause harm to any living creature there. So he, when he, when his father told all this, Kubera was very happy. He went there and he lived very happily with his followers, and with all humility, he was very humble. He lived there happily, and he would travel in a new uh, vimana, pushpak vimana. Now and then, he would come to uh, the mainland. He would go and visit his father, 
and come back so this was the uh, story of how kubera actually went to lanka so now ram was very surprised ram was shaking his head ram was shaking his head and repeatedly he was looking at agastya and ram was asking what how was it the rakshasa lived in lanka even before kubera went there or even before vishravas what is this i don't understand how did the rakshasas live there even before this because remember uh, what did agastya say he said that this area was deserted by the uh, i mean not agastya sorry vishravas he said this area was deserted by the rakshasas and they fled in fear of lord vishnu so ramchandra was asking how is it i don't understand i thought the rakshasas began with ravana with uh, with the son of vishravas how is it that these rakshasas were there and uh, before Ra- ravana and tell me about them were they greater than ravana kumbakarna and others who their ancestors what offense did they do that vishnu drove them out of this place so please tell me this and i'm very curious to know these are the questions of ram so remember the first question of ram was about indrajit we haven't answered that question we are co- we are looking at the uh, uh, we are more looking at uh, the story of kulatsya and vishravas and all of them and now ram is asking what happened before vishravas and how did the rakshasa originally reside in lanka this is the question now asked at this time agastya was very smiling he started smiling and he was very surprised that the same vishnu was asking this question because he was the one who was responsible in driving them out and he's asking this question innocently so sage agastya smiled again and he began the narration so he said now this is a story within a story he said long time ago when brahma was born from the navel of vishnu he created all living beings okay when one set of living beings were created as soon as they were born they were very thirsty and hungry hmm? so some of them said we will eat you and some of them said we will not protect you they were basically revolting against brahma now where does this come this is actually there in the shrimad bhagavatam it's very interesting this particular verse is also there in the bhagavatam in the fourth in the third canto third canto verse tw- uh, chapter 20 verse 21 you will see how the rakshasas were created by lord brahma so now agastya is going back to another story where he is telling the origin of all the rakshasas even before ravana okay so there is a bhagavatam verse i'll read that verse hmm? brahma the head of the demigods full of anxiety asked them don't eat me but protect me you are born from me and you have become my son therefore you are the yakshas and rakshasas this is the verse and purport is given by prabhupad prabhupad explains the origin of the yakshas and the rakshasas here so prabhupad says the demons who were born from the body of brahma were called yakshas and rakshasas because some of them cried that brahma should be eaten and others cried that he should not be protected the ones who said that he should be eaten were called as yakshas and the ones who said that he should not be protected became rakshasas man eaters the two yakshas and rakshasas are the original creation by brahma and are represented even today in the uncivilized men who are scattered all over the universe they are born in the mode of ignorance and therefore because of their behavior we are called as rakshasas or man eaters so this is the origin that now Uh, is being explained about how the rakshasas were created by sage agastya okay i hope everyone is following the story line it's actually quite for me it was very confusing but i'm just trying to explain it to my best so anyway uh, the rakshasas were created by lord brahma now the king of the rakshasas i mean the leader of the rakshasas once they were created were heti and praheti again this is a common name you will see in the shrimad bhagavatam whenever there is fight between devas and asuras you will see these two heti praheti and you will also see some the name of some other rakshasas were very known in scriptures anyway so heti and praheti uh, they were the leaders of the rakshasas when they were created now this heti and praheti they decided to practice lots of penances so uh, heti he wanted to uh, actually praheti was the one who went ahead and he was continuing to practice lot of penances but whereas heti eventually he wanted to get married 
and he managed to marry the sister of Kala, who is called as Bhaya. Okay, this is also there in the Bhagavatam. These people, uh, the names of these characters. So basically, from Bhaya, he had children, and uh, she had a chief son called as Vidyut Kesha. Just remember Vidyut Kesha. Okay. Now this Vidyut Kesha, he married a woman called as Salakanta Kata. And she eventually gave birth to a son. Now, here is an interesting story. So, from uh, Haiti, uh, yeah, from Haiti, he married a woman and he got Vidyut Kesha. From Vidyut Kesha, a son was born, okay, from his wife. Now, this son who was born, he was left, okay, he was left there because the mother didn't care for the son as she was enjoying with her husband and abandoning her son. So this son who was there uh, in the mountains was found by Lord Shiva and Parvati. When Parvati and Lord Shiva saw the son being abandoned, they felt a real compassion for the child and they made this Rakshasa instantly grow up and Lord Shiva gave him a flying city and he blessed him with a lot of boons. Okay, so basically Lord Shiva and Parvati, they, they, they felt compassion because a child was being abandoned there when they came across that area and they gave him lots of boons and these Rakshasas, they were, I mean, especially this boy at this time, he was blessed to grow up instantly. So he just grew up instantly and he got a flying city also. So he became a little proud because he had all these boons and he roamed about very freely, uh, just like Indra. And seeing this Sukesha with so many boons, uh, and being so uh, celebrated and glorious, a Gandharva person gave his daughter called as Devavati marriage to Sukesha. Sukesha then, so first we have uh, Prah uh, Heti Praheti, from there we have uh, Vidyut Kesha, from Vidyut Kesha we have Sukesha, and then from Sukesha three sons were born. These three people are very important. Who are the three sons of Sukesha? They are Mali, Sumali, Malyavan. Anyone remembers the name Malyavan uh, in connection with the previous chapters of the Ramayana? Yeah, he's a grandfather. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Raman. <laughs> yeah, right. So he's the grandfather of Ravana. Yeah, so Mali, Sumali, and Malyavan. So these three were the sons of Sukesha. Hmm? Now, these three brothers, they grew up to be very strong Rakshasas. And these three Rakshasas are also mentioned in many places in the Srimad Bhagavatam, like 6th Canto and 8th Canto. In the fight between the demigods and the demons during the churning of the milk ocean, and also, I think, in the fight of Vritrasura. In these two areas, you will find these three names, Mali, Sumali. Especially Mali, Sumali are mentioned again and again. Okay? So, Mali, Sumali, Malyavan. They were terrorizing the universe. So... These three brothers, they understood that their father, Sukesha, had got a lot of boons. And desiring to get boons, they also went to Mount Meru and they began to perform austerities. So Brahma being pleased with them, he appeared in front of them and uh, they asked for boons. They asked for boons of having a very long life and winning over all the enemies and having love for each other. This is the boons that they asked. So once they got these boons from Brahma, as usual, they went around harassing all the demigods. And finally, they approached Vishwakarma to build them a city. And this Vishwakarma, at this time, for these three brothers, he built across the southern ocean, on Mount Trikuta, near Mount Suvela, on top of Mount Trikuta, he said, I have now built a city called as Lanka with golden port. It is 30 yojanas wide in length. And you will go there and live happily unconquered by your enemies. This is when the three of them got Lanka. Okay. This is the origin of the Rakshasas and this is how they got Lanka. Now, they went there and they lived very happily. And at that time there was a Gandharva woman called as Narmada who had three daughters. And she gave her three daughters to, all these, to these three Rakshasas. Now Malyavan, remember again now we will come to some names you can connect back now. Now, this Malyavan from his wife Sundari begot Vajramushti, Virupaksha, Dhumraksha, uh, Suptagna, Matta, Yagnakopa, Unmata, and a daughter called as Anala. At least Virupaksha name you might have heard. He was one of the associate demons of Ravana. Okay? From Ketumati, Sumali's wife came 
ಸಹಸ್ತ ಅಕಂಪನ ವಿಕಟ ಕಲಿಕಾಮುಖ ಧೂಮ್ರಾಕ್ಷ ದಂಡ ಸುಪರ್ಶ್ವ ಸಂಹಾರ್ಧಿನಿ ಪ್ರಘಾಶ ಭಾಸ್ಕರಾನ ಓಕೆ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಯು ವುಡ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಪ್ರಹಸ್ತ ಅಕಂಪನ ವಿಕಟ ಧೂಮ್ರಾಕ್ಷ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ವರ್ ವೆರಿ ಕಾಮನ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾವಣ ಥ್ರೋಟ್ ದ ಯುದ್ಧ ಕಾಂಡ ಯುವರ್ ಸಿ ಡಿಸ್ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸುಮಾಲಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ರಕ ಪುಷ್ಪೋತ್ಕಟ ಕೈಕಾಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕುಂಬಿನಾಸಿ ನಾವು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಕೈಕಾಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕುಂಬಿನಾಸಿ ಓಕೆ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕೀಪ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ವರ್ಡ್ ಸಾರಿ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಡಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಸುಮಾಲಿ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಹೂ ಕೈಕಾಸಿ ಸಮಾಲಿ <laughs> Uh, the third uh, we saw uh, sumali uh, yeah we saw already maliwan and sumali they are children now from mali he had a wife called as vasubha and she begot anala anila hara and sampati okay i'll need to repeat the names they are anala anila hara and sampati now these four were the ministers of vibhishan vibhishan had four ministers right so these four are the ministers of vibhishan so this is the story of uh, how uh, the three brothers they had these children and these children will actually be with ravana throughout the ramayana you will see their names okay so now these three brothers with their families uh, you know with their relatives and everybody they started terrorizing this universe the three brothers were uh, always terrorizing the universe so they continued now these three brothers they attacked the demigods and the demigods in turn they ran to lord shiva for shelter now lord shiva had given many favorable boons to their father sukesha remember their father sukesha was abandoned and he had give, he had received lot of boons so when they went and approached lord shiva uh, the demigods went and approached lord shiva to give protection from these three brothers at that time shiva said i have told sukesha their father that the, i will not harm him so i cannot harm his son i will not do anything to sukesha he is very dear to me so you please go to vishnu and vishnu will surely help you and then the demigods they all ran to narayan and they told him oh lord you are the only shelter of everybody so please protect us by killing all these rakshasas and they are creating a lot of havoc it's becoming a big problem with them so when the lord heard this he said he will kill the rakshasas and he will give them protection meanwhile now see how it goes this malyavan among the three brothers is malyavan and mataji just said malyavan was actually the grandfather of ravana and this grandfather of ravana you will you would have seen his character in the previous chapters also what happened here is when malyavan heard that narayan the supreme lord has offered to help the demigods he got scared he went and told his other two brothers that vishnu is not ordinary i think we should not play tricks with him he is the one who had previously killed great demons like kalani and hiranyakashipu namuchi and all of them so this uh, he said we should be careful let's not attack the demigods anymore he told his two brothers interesting this is the same malyavan who had advised ravana to return sita back to ram he even told ravana in one of the chapters that he suspected ram to be the supreme lord vishnu so he said the same words to ravana don't play tricks with him he is vishnu be careful so the same thing even in those days the same mali one said the same words to his brothers but <coughs> however the brothers in told so told him what are you talking see we know everything we are experts in all the vedas we have done so many sacrifices we are so expert in uh, performing austerities so much dharma we are this we are that who can conquer us even lord brahma and lord shiva everybody is listening to us we have got so many boons everyone will shiver in front of us there is no need to worry for all this let's go and attack all the demigods right away and no one not even vishnu can do anything to us so this is how they convince their brother so here is a classic case of a person who thinks he knows it all 
interesting to see how demons think pride the feeling that i know who is better than me but this is sheer ignorance a person who really knows will be humble and will never advertise his knowledge the more we know the more humble we become that is spiritual mathematics right rather not knowledge only says so uh, they were just boasting they're saying oh who can do anything to us there is a lot of pride in them so anyway they convinced malyavan and they went ahead to the world of the demigods and they waged a war with them now the demigods and the demons they fought a very severe battle now here i don't know which battle they fought was it the battle during the time of the churning of the ocean or during vitrasura episode i don't know okay it's not mentioned here it could be one of them because bhagavatam talks of two instances so anyway it was a battle between the demons and the demigods and lord shri hari he came to save the uh, demigods of course and he mounted on a carrier garuda and he came there during the final fight to help the demigods so he was shining like the sun and he was uh, holding his shankha chakra gada the saranga bow his nandaka sword his beautiful quiver of arrows he was wearing a beautiful shining yellow garment and he appeared extremely wonderful like the streak of a lightning and while he was going to the battlefield all the praises were sung by the siddhas and rishis and gandharvas and yakshas and just by the wind arising uh, from the flapping of garuda's wings a huge portion of the rakshasa army was instantly destroyed so lord hari he entered the battlefield and thousands and thousands of rakshasa surrounded the lord and attacked him and attacked by a huge number of rakshasas lord vishnu he stretched his saranga bow and he released arrows that smashed all the demons so the sound of the panchajanya conch terrified the demons and everyone was severely afflicted by the arrows of lord hari and many of them they went back running to lanka now however sumali he rushed towards uh, uh, lord, the lord to attack him and the lord cut off the head of his charioteer and his horses and seeing this his brother mali came forward to attack the lord so uh, he couldn't face the arrows of the lord but at one point what mali did was he took his club and he went forward and he hit the forehead of garuda okay now when garuda was hit for one second garuda was unable to tolerate that acute pain and he turned away his face so when he turned away his face from the battlefield along with the lord sitting on him seeing that lord vishnu itself was made to turn away from the battlefield all the rakshasas started roaring in joy okay they were all screaming very happily that you know this uh, garuda was made to turn away and the lord himself had to turn reverse but what did the lord do so he was turned away the lord released the sudarshan chakra and this unfailing sudarshan chakra went and chopped off the head of mali mali fell down dead mali was done and seeing mali dead sumali and mali one they were very grief stricken and all the demons they fled back to lanka now mali one at this time seeing that all the demons were running away mali one was very angry and he told the lord he told how can you release the sudarshan chakra when you turned back that is not fair but the lord told him i have given my word to my devotees and i will do anything to protect them i'll always be there for them i'll do anything for them it doesn't matter now i'm going to even kill you so we see that the lord will do anything to protect his devotees to take care of his devotees take the case of vamana or mohini murti externally it may appear deceptive oh vamana is taking three steps of land covering the entire universe he said he wanted three steps of land to yeah, take uh, in the form of a dwarf but the lord he will do anything whatever it takes to protect his devotees so for a second when he turned back he released his sudarshan chakra and chopped off the head of mali now maliyan he was accusing the lord over you all you are like you are like this you are like that he was accusing him and while he was talking to the lord itself and the lord was telling him no 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 i will do anything for my devotees at that time maliyan when the lord was talking maliyan struck him with a spear and uh, uh, again uh, he used a spike to mace and he hit the lord's chest and seeing this garuda got very angry seeing the way he was attacking the lord so garuda was very angry and he flapped his wings so hard see again the nature of a devotee a devotee cannot tolerate anything being done to the lord 
So Garuda couldn't tolerate this. In the previous case, because Garuda was hit by the mace, the Lord got angry and immediately he, re- he released his Sudarshan. Actually, that was the boiling point, you know. That was the point when the Lord actually killed Mali because Garuda was hit. Same thing now, the Lord was being hit and Garuda couldn't tolerate. So Garuda, he started flapping his wings so hard in anger that Malia was, was simply blown away by the wind, by the wings of the wind of Garuda. So both Malyavan and Sumali, they fled to Lanka. They were just thrown away. You know? They were literally carried away by the wind and they were thrown away to Lanka. But, however, they were so scared of Lord Vishnu at this time that they even left Lanka. They thought it is not safe for us to stay here anymore because Vishnu is not going to leave us. And at that time, they vacated Lanka in fear of the Lord and they went to the Rasatala region. This is how initially the Rakshasas had occupied Lanka. Mali, Somali, Malyavan had a boon from Brahma. They asked Vishwakarma to build Lanka for them. They were living there very happily. But they had to vacate that area and go to Rasatala in fear of Lord Vishnu. This is the question asked by Ram. Uh, how is it that they were, you are saying that the Rakshasas were already there? And this is how the answer was given. Now, uh, Agastya said, Raghava, at this time, uh, you know, when this area of Lanka was vacated by uh, these three brothers, that is when later Vishravat asked his son Kubera to go and stay there. So, uh, Agastya also said, Raghava, this Ramana was killed by you. Hmm? He is also a Rakshasa, but he is a descendant of Pulatsya. That is his father line is the descendant of Pulatsya. But, and you are the same Narayana, the bearer of the conch, this club, and you cannot tolerate your devotees being disturbed. Therefore, you are appearing from time to time to destroy the Rakshasas and protect the devotees and establish Dharma. You are the same person who killed Mali at that time. Okay, to protect your devotees. The same you, the same Lord has come back as Lord Ram to kill Ravana, who is also a Rakshasa. They are, uh, uh, this Ravana from his father's side, he may be a Brahmin, he may be a son, grandson of Palatya, but from his mother's side, he still remains a Rakshasa and his qualities are of that of a Rakshasa. So therefore, you appear from time to time and we know the same as well from Bhagavad Gita that the Lord comes to protect his devotees, to establish dharma, and to destroy the rakshasas or the demons. Okay? So, uh, the Lord, uh, that's what Agastya again repeated. And you are very fond of those who take refuge in you, and you never give up on them. It's a very beautiful thing. If one has taken shelter of the Lord, the Lord will never give up on them. So, uh, this is what Agastya praises the Lord. You have come to, you know, for a particular purpose, and because your devotees had taken shelter in you, you, are, you came here to kill Ravana. So, uh, like this, Agastya said, now I have described to you the origin of the Rakshasa, and now I am going to tell you about the origin of Ravana. Still, Indrajit is not being addressed. First, origin of Ravana, Ravana has to marry, Indrajit has to be born, then he will tell about Indrajit. So, now next section, we are going to see origin of Ravana. So, tormented, by this uh, fear of Lord Vishnu, Somali and Malyavan with their relatives, they vacated Lanka and they lived in Rasatala. And meanwhile, Kubera or Vaishravana, son, first son of Vishravas, Vaishravana, Kubera, he took up the residence in Lanka. Okay, now this is where we have come back. So we started with their story, now we are back to that story. So for a long, after, uh, so Kubera was living there, but however, what happened next was, after a long time of being in the Rasatala region, Sumali, he emerged from the Rasatala region and he wandered around the earth with his beautiful daughter who was at a marriageable age. And who was this daughter in his hand? It was Kaikasi. Now we are going to come to the birth of Ravana. So we need the mother of Ravana. So holding Kaikasi in his hand, this Sumali, he emerged from the Rasatala region and he was roaming around the earth. Okay? So while he was wandering, he happened to see Vaishravana Kudera boarding his Pushpaka Vimana and going to see his father Vishravas. He was saying, oh, he's living in Lanka, he's taking his Pushpaka and he's going, he's going to see his father. This is interesting. 
he followed Kubera to see what was happening and seeing the splendor and capabilities. He was so amazed. And he saw Vishravas. He saw Vishravas, how Vishravas was such a great sage. So he thought for some time and he thought what would be the best that he could do for the good of all the Rakshasa. Thinking like that, taking his beautiful daughter Kaikasi in his hand, he told his daughter, you are now of marriageable age I, and I think this is the best husband for you. You should go and marry sage Vishravas. So if you marry Vishravas, I will assure you that you will have a resplendent son just like Kubera, just like his stepbrother Kubera. So I think this is the best for you. You go and marry Vishravas. And then all good fortune will be for all the Rakshasa. So Kaiki, see, um, she, she was asked to go to the uh, reg- uh, place where Vishravas was practicing his uh, sadhana. And Kaiki, see, immediately she obeyed her father and she went and stood in the ashram of Vishravas. Uh, at that time, he was performing the Agnihotra sacrifices. And she requested the sage that she wanted to have children with them as suggested by her father. Vishravas, then he he told her that she had approached at a very inauspicious moment at that time and he will uh, be with, I mean, be her husband but she will bring forth a raksh, a many rakshasas performing many cruel deeds. So he said you came at a very inauspicious time so the result is not good but I will accept you but the result is not good. She fell at the feet of the sage and he said hey sage I want sons from you who are well read in the Vedas who are like you, who are knowledgeable in Shastra, who know the Supreme Lord, I don't want demoniac son, so be kind to me. See, Kaitisi didn't have that kind of an inclination that she wanted to have Rakshasas. No, she didn't have that inclination. She was very genuine when she approached Vishrava. But then Vishrava said, time is inauspicious, very similar to Diti and Kashyap story, Kashyapa and uh, Diti, same story, right? So she felt she wanted to have good sons. But uh, unfortunately, he said, no, we will have demoniac sons. They can't help it. So then Vishrava said, but however, since you're requesting so much, your third son will be very dharmic and he will have all the qualities of the Brahminical lineage from my side, however, not the other two. So the third one is Vedishan. The first and second is Ramana Kumbhakarma. So in course of time, this uh, uh, Kaitesi, she gives birth to a very hideous Rakshasa with 10 heads and 20 arms and fiery hair and ferocious teeth, coppery lips, and that is Ravana. So all the bad omens were visible when this great demon called as Dashagriva was born. That is his name that his mother gave him, actually. His name is Dashagriva. Later, he was known as Ravana because he made all the world cry. So Dashagriva was born right after him. Kumbhakarana was born. Kumbhakarana was so big that no one in the world looked bigger than him. Then a daughter was born, that is Shurpanaka. She had an ugly face and she was born. And finally, finally, the third son was born, the pious-minded Vibhishan. Vibhishan was very fond of righteousness. He had a very self-controlled lifestyle. He lived on a spare diet, I'd say. (laughs) So he was very careful about what he ate. Uh, Being careful about what we eat is something that is very important, uh, the quality of food that we eat. So basically, Vibhishan was very careful about what he ate, and he regularly studied the Vedas. So these are the qualities of Vibhishan after Vibhishan was born. So as they grew up, uh, once Vaishravana or Kudera, the first son from the first wife, he came on an airplane to offer respects to his father, and seeing his stepson, her stepson, Kaikesi, told Dashagriva, Ravana, that see, that is your stepbrother Kubera. He's your half-brother. And he's the lord of riches. He's done so much austerities and he's become the lord of riches. He's so glorious. Look at yourself. How you are. You don't have any great qualities. You look so poor. So why don't you put some efforts? Why don't you put some efforts and become like him? Take him as a role model. You have so much capability. So do something about yourself. So when he was advised by his mother like this, hearing the words of his mother, Dashagriva, he became very envious. 
So this is what happens many times when generally when a, with kids you might all have this experience, they become envious if they are compared with their with anyone else, be it the neighbor or someone in their own family or whatever it is. Kids become very envious. So Ramana felt very bad. He got very angry and he also became very envious. So this enviousness is not needed. Now when someone, is, his mother didn't want him to become envious. His mother was telling, look at him, be like him. He's so good. You know, this is a normal thing parents say. But however, this Dashagriva's mentality was very different. So he got envious. Oh, how can only he be good? I will destroy him and I will become better than him. That is the tendency that was there in his heart. So enviousness springs from the idea that I am the controller, I am the proprietor, I am the enjoyer, I am everything of everything. So, so when we see someone better than us in some task, you know, be it anything, we, you know, like uh, even in devotional service, when you see someone who is uh, who's better than us in cooking or in preaching or in book distribution or uh, whatever, it can be any service or even cleaning parts, we become envious because we want to be the proprietor of that particular opulence. How can he have that opulence? I should have it. So that is what envy is all about. So Ravana, he felt very envious. So it's very interesting how the Srimad Bhagavatam says about Ramayana. Actually, there's a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, chapter 11, verse 23. I just quote this verse to see how what Bhagavatam talks about Ramayana. It says, O King Parikshit, anyone who actually receives the narration concerning the characteristics of Lord Ramachandra's pastimes will ultimately be freed from the disease of envy and thus be liberated from the bondage of fruitive activities. Okay? So this is the boon given to the people who are listening to Ramayana. And you see that Ravana was envious right from the beginning. He was envious of his brother and later he was even envious of Lord Ram and Ram destroyed this very personification of envy. So anyone who hears the Ramayana with you know, with a nice uh, mind, with, you know, who's able to listen to it carefully, they will actually conquer this envy, like how Ram conquered Ravana. So anyway, now Ravana Maharaj says, Krishna is the proprietor of all opulences. We have to see that Krishna is the doer. If someone is speaking nicely, we should, we should not think, just see how, this, how wonderfully this speak, person is speaking, I want to be better than him. We should see how wonderfully Krishna is manifesting through that person. If someone thinks very nicely, just think, see how wonderfully Krishna is manifesting through him. So if someone is managing or cooking or doing anything very nicely, dressing the deities very nicely, we should just think, see how nicely Krishna is manifesting through him, to this person in such a wonderful way. Then we will not be envious. We will simply find great joy and inspiration in everyone's devotional service. So this is something very sweet, I thought, um, for us to practice, especially when we feel that we are not do, uh, someone else is doing the service better. This is a nice thing to practice. We always not think, oh, this person is cooking so well, or this person is singing so well. I want to sing better than them. No, that should not be the mood. Rather, it should be, uh, we should think, Oh, Krishna is manifesting himself so beautifully. So let me appreciate him. That is when the envy reduces in our heart. So it's a very beautiful realization, Maharaj, is here. I just wanted to share that. So anyhow, Ravana got envious. And then he said, today I will vow, today I take this vow to become equal to Vaishravana or even become better than him, excel in power, become better than him in all respects. So, mother, you give up this worry about your sons. Your sons are going to be better than your co-wife's son. So, this is the thing that Dashagriva said. And he took his brothers and he told them, they are all going to go and perform tapas. They are going to go and satisfy Brahma. And uh, uh, Brahma is going to uh, give us boon. So, he takes his brother. He goes. He performs all kinds of austerities. And being satisfied by the austerities, he performed Brahma became very, very, <laughs> Ravana became very, very strong. And he became so strong that he became victorious over everyone. So this is what Agastya was telling Ram. Now when Ram heard this, Ram asked another question. Ram asked Agastya, so what kind of austerities did they perform? Please elaborate on that. 
So then Sri Jagastya told him, Kumbhakarana, he did severe austerities in summer. He stood between blazing fire and, under, uh, and hot sun. In winter, he stood under ice-cold water. And during raining season, he was drenched standing in one leg. Like this, he performed penances for 10,000 years. Vibhinshan also stood on one leg for 1,000 years with raised hands to offer his respects to the sun god. And with the intent of study of the Vedas, he spent 5,000 years standing. And this, in total, 10,000 years, he was also performing different austerities. Now, Dashagriva, the eldest Ramana, on his part, he also stood for 10,000 years. And here is something interesting. After every thousand years, he cut off his head, one of his head, and he offered that head in sacrifice to the fire. He had ten heads, so ten thousand years. When he was about to cut off his final head, Brahma appeared in front of him because he was scared that the final head is going to go. And Brahma was very pleased. He appeared in front of him. And Dashagriva told, uh, and uh, Dashagriva was very, very happy to see Brahma. He was so happy. His voice was all choked up. Oh, Brahma is finally here. And then Rama said, okay, I'm pleased with you. So now you can ask for a boon. And Ravana asked for immortality. So Brahma said, there is no question of immortality. Even I am not immortal. So you ask for something else. And at that time, Ravana said, we all know this. He said, I want immunity from death. Uh, from the Nagas, Supernas, Daityas, Danavas, Rakshasas and the Devatas. I am not scared of the human beings because we are as insignificant as a straw. These are the words of Ravana. So immediately Brahma said, Tathastu, okay, you will get your boon. And not only that, you will also revive your nine heads that you put in the sacrifice. And I will also give you one more boon. You can assume any form at your will. So like this, all the boons uh, Dashagriva acquired. Now then Brahma turns to, turned towards Vibhishan and told him, Hey, Vibhishna, I'm so happy to see you. And uh, I know you're very virtuous. So you can ask me for any boon you want. So then Vibhishan said, I'm actually very fortunate, first of all, that I got your darshan. That itself is a very big fortune for me. But however, if it gives you any happiness and if you're satisfied, please grant me this boon. That whenever, so beautiful, Vibhishan. He says, whenever I am in the greatest of the difficulties, my mind should stand Steady in dharma. Give me this boon that I should have a controlled mind. My mind, sh- my mind should always adhere to dharma even under very difficult circumstances. And I also request one more thing. Let the knowledge of the Brahmastra dawn on me. Okay? So, uh, and also, let me always remember the path of dharma and perform all actions and all stages of life that is in line with dharma. So basically he asks for two bones if you put them together. He just asks for two bones. One is to always be dharmic. Under any circumstances and his whole life should be a life of dharma. That is what he asks. The second thing he asks about the secret of the dharmastra. Now you will remember, this is actually an interesting boon because it was very helpful during the war. If you trace back the war, the Yudhakanda, you will see that when Indrajit uh, released the Brahmastra, it was Hanuman and Vibhishan who were first unaffected by the Brahmastra. They were the ones who first get up and then they go and talk to Jambavan and then Jambavan asks, is Hanuman alive? And then Hanuman goes and gets the uh, mountain of herbs. So this is how the whole story comes about. How is it that only Vibhishan and Hanuman were spared? Initially everyone was unconscious, but they got up very fast, right? These two persons were the least affected. They immediately got up, actually. Not even for some time they were unconscious. So how is it? Because they both had the secret of the Brahmastra. Even Hanuman was blessed with this. So that's how they came. And then they, Jambavan was the son of Brahma. So he was also less affected. He also got up very fast. But then the rest of the Vanaras were uh, later revived with the uh, herbs that Hanuman brought. So anyway... So then uh, he looked towards Kumbhakarna now. Uh, Lord Brahma, he looked towards this mighty Kumbhakarna. And when he was, when Kumbhakarna was ready to ask his bones, all the demigods screamed. They all told Brahma, Brahma, please stop. Don't give him any bones. He will eat up everybody. He is already creating so much of havas and he's eaten so many people. And please help us. Don't do this. 
So then Brahma thought of his wife Saraswati and she immediately came to her service and she modified the speech of Kumbhakarana and Kumbhakarana asked, O oh Lord, give me continuous sleep. So this is the story we have already seen. And Brahma said, okay. And Kumbhakarana was very, very shocked after Brahma gave him the boon. Uh, he thought, oh, I never wanted to ask for that. I don't know how I managed to ask that. Maybe it's the work of the devas. And then later, Ravana, he requested Brahma to allow him to wake up once in six months at least. So like this, the three brothers, they received their boons and they went back happily. Sometimes, austerity can lead to pride. See how nicely I can perform austerity. See how austere I am. See how nicely I can do this, I can do that, I can fast, I can be so uh, austere. Now, such things are good, very good in Krishna consciousness, but it can sometimes lead us to become proud that I am better than others. So Ravana became very proud because of my austerity. I won over Kudera. So now I have so much, uh, you know, I have, uh, I have this feeling that no one can kill me. You know, that kind of feeling Ravana had developed. And he became more and more powerful. Unfortunately, we have to stop. I thought we can cover more, but we can't. Okay, anyway. So we have to now see um, how the demons emerged from Rasatala. Now that they are uh, Nebu, their dear Nebu, Ravana had come powerful, all the demons are going to come back from Rasatala and join hands with Ravana. So we will stop here. We'll continue from here in our next class. Uh, I, I'll stop here. Please go ahead with any questions, comments, corrections, or anything else. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, wonderful class, beautiful. Thank you so much for taking all the efforts in explaining us. Thank you. Thank you. You are a blessing for us, Kirti Prasandari Mataji. Thank you for being there. Thank you for all the guidance that you have consistently given me. Thank you. I stand nowhere in front of you, so please. No, 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 no. Both of you are wonderful. Thanks. Thank you, Kamaruki Mataji. Thank you for being there, Mataji. It was so nice to have this interactive question answer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Very, very wonderful. Both of you. Nice class. Well, it's not class, it's like a story. No? Very nice. Cannot uh, keep my ears off. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> that was very good. kind. Yeah, all glory to our Guru Maharajas and Vajra yes. mind. Thank you, Mataji. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you so much for such a beautiful narration. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Pavitra Madhuri Mataji. Thank you so much for being with us always. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Kriti Vashini, Gopi Dandvat Pranam, Gopi Nathi, Jai Ho, Hare Dandvat Pranam. How much you are hard working for us to give on a Krishna concept. How nicely explained that my grandma is uh, telling story, but this is better than grandma. I just hear, 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 more than six or eight hours. <laughs> and then we we'll have to your seva. Learn so many things. From you. Gopinath Gopi Nath ki jai ho. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Vanda Gopika Mataji ki jai ho. Thank you Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Vanda Gopika. Very very beautiful class Mataji. Very nice. Sandavat Shyama Gauri Mataji. Thank you Mataji. Thank you so much for coming. From where you collect all this information, never heard that before. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mataji, there are uh, summary uh, books of all the uh, of the story. Uh, also, the original. Uh, I mean, like there are also verse by verse, but that can only, uh, in the sense, like we don't take commentaries from there or something. We can just understand the storyline from there. But the realization part or anything that is away from the actual script is uh, mostly from uh, Guru Maharaj's words. Because I really don't have any realizations. I just repeat realizations. <laughs> so other than that, the basic storyline, Mataji, is available. Mataji, even Purna Pragna Das has given a book. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are a lot of compilations of Ramayana. Uh, it is there even uh, 
so many books are there makaji for the basic story line it's not a big uh, secret mm-hmm. so it's there uh, for the whole ramayana also i think uh, for the first part i was telling the other day that we have books like uh, uh, bhakti vikas maharaj actually that was also pune sagna das uh, translation krishna dharma prabhu so there are lots of translations makaji and also verse by verse also you can find uh, the sanskrit verses and all that there are traditional gita press books and all that for uh, elaboration on the story line but other than that uh, the basic uh, whatever uh, commentaries or seminars see that was the first thing i was telling the other day for the first half at least till ramapatta bishikam it was purely the seminars of our guru vargas that have given so much insights on the details if you go to bakti charu maharaj's seminar it was like pretty intensely detailed yeah and also radhanath maharaj of seminar he has also given a very nice section i think it was on one of hampi yatra so that was also very beautiful like that there are many mathas yes mother yeah <laughs> there are many yeah it's basically compilation mathas of everything and if there are any realization on com- or something like that it was only from our previous acharya commentaries uh, for uh, previous time when i was doing the ramayana katha till the uh, Uh, end of yuddha kanda for certain verses i did take the commentaries of shri vaishnav acharyas because they are heavily commented on on i won't say all the verses on certain verses that were extremely important for us to understand the mood of lord ram or something like that i did take that so that is the thing mataji for reference हरी बोल श्यामा गोरी प्रीति विलासिनी गोपी चलती फिरती लाइब्रेरी शी इज लर्निंग मोर देन फाइव सिक्स बुक्स एंड देन सी मेक लेक्चर आई नो हर यस वेरी ट्रू वेरी नाइस बात है जी वेरी नाइस यू हैव कलेक्टेड हनी फ्रॉम ऑल द डिफरेंट प्लेस लाइक हनी बी हनी बी यस <laughs> all glory to all the mataji and just like you know me right i'm just this person who copy paste everything and then tell so that's what i do well adesh you know you working hard for us mataji other <laughs> 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 it will come out so just like continuous flow it's not there is no stop or this <laughs> no, is no. of guru deva and wa hard working mataji Yes. Thank you very much, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. All the guru. Hare Krishna. Okay. So if no one else has any comments or questions, we can end the call. Thank you all so much for joining. One chat.